Good morning, Purr. Hi. Loafed up. Oh my goodness, lots of snow last night. Good morning, happy Saturday. Welcome back to another vlog. I slept in this morning. It is already a little after 10. Last night, I had myself a little rot night. Megan is out of town and I was just home alone and I binged six and a half episodes of Beef on Netflix. I don't remember the last time I sat down and just like was glued to the TV like this. It is so good and just like truly the definition of a binge worthy show. But today I'm going to get into some things per usual. So first things first, I need to go to Kroger and I'm like dreading scraping my car because there's a lot of snow on it. And I'm gonna bake a cheesecake. I'm nervous for it. I don't think I've ever made a cheesecake before. I think it's gonna be a new challenge for me. I'm still recovering from the Funfetti cake, if you know, you know. But that's what my boyfriend wanted for Valentine's Day and we're celebrating Valentine's Day this weekend just because last week was really busy and I didn't have a chance to. And I gotta get the ingredients for that, make that, and then I gotta get a lot of grading done this weekend. My students turned in their first major assignment which was a case study of social media influencers in a niche of their choice and they presented it in like the format of a web page. So got to do a bunch of grading for that. I have 22 students in one section and 23 in the other. So that's like almost 50 assignments that I have to grade. <laughs> Wow, that was a labor of love. Scraping the car, going to Kroger. It's like Bloomington just like wasn't prepared for this storm because typically we like salt the roads and stuff, but the roads just like aren't salted. Things are really icy. People were driving like they had no sense of reality. But I got everything I needed and I'm going to start getting to work. Okay, cheesecake is in the oven. I don't wanna open it because I know that's like the number one thing not to do, but I hate that it's bubbling and it has a crack in it. I did do a full on water bath, but I did put like a pan of like boiling steaming water to create more steam in the oven. So I just didn't want to take on a water bath because I didn't have like a big enough roasting pan for it. I only had like a nine by 13. Well, I had to pick up that nine by 13 pan from Target and it was a lot cheaper option, but it's okay. Cause I made some strawberry topping that I can cover it with if it looks ugly and has too many cracks and i know that the crack is just aesthetic i'm sure it'll still taste good i hope okay cheesecake is done baking so i have the oven slightly cracked so it can cool gradually and this is done i'm gonna let it completely cool before i put it in the fridge and it is 1 30 now so i'm gonna eat some lunch and then get into some grating leftover sushi bowls for dinner or for lunch and i'm gonna put this sriracha mayo on it okay time to get to grating it always takes me a while to get into grading like when it's a new assignment i have to like just get a feel for it again and also since i didn't teach in the fall this is like the first time i'm like grading it what feels like in a while so i had the goal of wanting to grade five projects today but i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do that so i might rethink that and i think my goal is going to be to grade three in this next hour this is the most time consuming part of teaching by far. Grading just takes so long and there's no way around it. Just kidding, I surprised myself and I got five graded. This is mostly because I'm using this canvas course shell from last spring when I taught it and it had a lot of the pre-saved comments in the rubric, which is nice. So I don't have to like individually type out like good analysis, but I wish I would have seen more of this or good design, but I wish excuse me it could decide but uh the writing could have been a little clearer in these areas obviously i go through and like customize each of those individual comments but like it's helpful to have like safe templates of comments is saved in the rubrics and canvas so i guess this is one way that i try and maximize time when grading but it is let me take these off i feel like i'm can't hear how loud i'm talking um 
It is three o'clock now. I am going to take a shower and then get ready to go to the antique mall with my boyfriend. I've never been there with him, but I love the Bloomington antique mall. I love just like thrifting and I've never done something like this with him. So I think it'll be really fun. And then we're gonna have our little Valentine's Day celebration where we're just making some heart shaped pasta and eating that cheesecake. Hello, happy Sunday. It's already pretty well into the afternoon. This morning I woke up and I just had like a lot of cleaning to do, a lot of dishes from last night. After I like cooked and everything, I was so tired. I just went to bed um, and made like no effort to pick anything up aside from like putting the leftovers away. But the pasta was super yummy and the cheesecake came out so good and very happy about that. But I have quite a few things on the to-do list for today. Sundays are always like really hard because I'm always torn between like, do I want to like relax and make the most of this before getting into a busy week? Or do I want to like get a bunch of stuff done so I could go into the week feeling like productive? I know it doesn't have to be all or nothing, but it's hard. So on my to-do list, I have to wash my sheets and my comforter. The comforter is currently in the wash, the sheets are in the dryer. I need to put away my laundry because I did a bunch of laundry yesterday and that's my most dreaded task, but I'm gonna let myself watch The Bachelor while I do it. I need to take out the recycling, which I think I'm gonna do in just a second on my way to pick up a sandwich for lunch. <laughs> I need to grade a lot of projects. And then I wanna do just some like self-care glow up things because I have the university honors and awards college filming a little video of me tomorrow they're getting b-roll while i teach and then i'm having an interview so I just like my hair to feel you know like clean and styled i would like to just do like an at-home gel manicure it's been a minute since i did that and try and pluck the eyebrows a little bit nothing crazy but make a little bit of an effort for that so let's take the recycling and get a little sandwich just put my order in the app on jersey mics and they were like you have enough points to redeem for a free sub so it's meant to be Love this for myself. Okay, this is a turkey and provolone sandwich on like that rosemary cheesy garlic bread and you gotta do it Mike's way and then I add mustard, mayo, and pickle. This is the Emily Kaiser sandwich and some big lace at home. I decided not to do gel just because my nails are still very much healing from all the dip nail polish I did and I went with just like regular nail polish. This is like the SE gel, but you don't use a lamp or anything. And this top coat dries so fast, which I love. It's a little darker than I thought it would be, but it's still winter time, still cute. Somehow it is already six o'clock, but I have done the grading that I wanted to get done for the day. I graded five more and for some reason they took longer this time around. Um, I think it was just giving more feedback. I don't know, sometimes when I'm like really like locked in as the kids say these days, I can grade quicker than others. I'm feeling a little sleepy today. But I am going to finally put my clothes away and make my bed because I washed my sheets and comforter. And then I think I'm gonna start doing some me things, mostly just like wash and style my hair. <laughs> I just spent an embarrassingly long amount of time trying to come up with some outfits for tomorrow for being filmed, even though literally no one's gonna see it. So I have this first one with the green blazer, a black like mock neck t-shirt, and then some wide like jeans, and then like black loafers, white socks. And this one is more casual, white long sleeve, these gray pants that I got from Abercrombie that I haven't taken the tag off yet, and then my new balances. It's gonna be a game time decision. Good morning. Happy Monday. We went with this fit. There is a fuller look. Stay tuned, may end up taking the blazer off. I have this cute little hair clip bar accessory in. Okay, a couple hours later, right back where I started this morning. Wow, that was a wild ride. I like low-key feel like a celebrity. <laughs> they were like, just getting a lot of b-roll and they were like let's follow you as you like walk through campus and it was like of course between like class periods and so students were just like stopping like waiting for me to walk just like looking around and while like this guy with like a big old camera is like recording it and yeah it was it was wild um maybe i can like link the final video 
when it gets produced on like my YouTube community board or something if you guys are curious. But they also asked me some questions in a little interview segment. Um, and they were questions like I wasn't expecting, but I don't know, I just answered them honestly. It's not like it was like a job interview or something. It's just to get a feel for like my teaching and stuff. Um, but yeah, teaching was good today. We talked about an article called Try Making a Living on TikTok if you're not white. And it gets into a lot of like the racial disparities in influencer marketing and how cancel culture is a lot more prevalent if you are a creator of color really interesting stuff i like actually wish we had a little more time in the second section to like keep the conversation going um we also played around with generative ai and like looking at claude and chat GPT and how they can help us with idea generations for the podcast but can't quite write a whole script for us and how we can use adobe firefly to make some images that could be like podcast cover art and yeah some cool stuff but I feel thoroughly exhausted, <laughs> very peopled out. So I, there's no way I'm about to like hop into writing. I need to eat a little something and then I think I'm gonna be a couch potato for an hour or two. Okay, it is 3.41 and I've thoroughly chilled out um, and I feel like I need to get some work done even though I really wanna take a nap. So I have a couple new library books that I want to get started on. This first one, which I already skimmed through the introduction, is called The Mirror and the Veil, an overview of American online diaries and blogs. I want to say blogs. And the framework is that blogs are both a mirror and a veil. And I can get more into that as I read more. This one is called The Visibility Trap. I love the cover. That's so fun. Sexism, Surveillance, and Social Media. And then I have two other ones here, which I've showed you guys before, but I have some more downstairs too. One is about digital literacy and emerging audiences. I can't remember the other one. That's how you know. I've checked out too many books recently. I just, I don't know. I was on a spree there. And I feel like I have a lot of reading to do just about blogs and about just like the earlier days of the internet. <laughs> sitting on my bed in the late afternoon and that means it's time for a little chatty segment a little update on what I read so as I mentioned the mirror and the veil I started the intro of this in like skin through chapter one a couple days ago and just now I specifically read the chapter called one moment male and female cyber bodies so this book is a little bit dated it's from 2004 I think yeah 2004 but that's okay because that's what I want I'm working on just seeing the ways that people talked about um, blogs which are blogs predecessors in the beginning of when they came to be which is like right around 2000 so she makes a few interesting claims here she doesn't really talk as much about the mirror and veil metaphor as much as I thought that she would, given that it's like the title of the book, or maybe it's more in the chapters that I didn't really read. Um, but she's coming from like a literary and philosophical perspective, which is different. Feels like the type of stuff I read in like my literature coursework, um, or even in like my foundations of rhetoric course, which was like Plato and Socrates and like philosophy essentially. But I have a quote here in terms of explaining how blogs and she calls it like the screen is functioning as a veil in a mirror it's a veil in the sense that it is protecting the writer it says the screen seemingly offers a protection against the gaze of others enabling each diary writer to disclose intimate thoughts and deeds thus attempting to achieve transparency but there's no such thing as private content on the internet um, and then she also talks about it as a mirror, like by that same token, saying the computer screen is not only a device which keeps others at a distance, but it's also a symbolic space where dreams and fantasies can be projected. The screen is transformed into a mirror onto which diary writers project the signifiers of their identity in an ongoing process of self-destruction and reconstruction. Which is really interesting. I forget that when working with like literary or philosophical frameworks, 
they are frameworks that you sort of like use as like lenses and mold and adapt and shape to like fit your own ideas or like view your own ideas in new ways. Um, so this is just like a different kind of thinking. So that's something to make note of. I don't know necessarily if I want to use this metaphor. I know it's kind of similar to like what Richard Lanham calls like the at through. When you look at screens, you're either looking at it and it's like a mirror in a way and you're seeing yourself or you're looking through it to like see the content. Um, and I think Richard Lanham came first. So there's some, there's some conflict there, um, but he's obviously coming from like a digital rhetoric perspective. And something interesting that she also talks about is like, the inherent self-reflexive nature of diary writing specifically online diary writing and that often so she does like a case study of a bunch of online diary writers and one observation that she makes is like when they first get started like with their online diary like one of their very first posts there's like this justification what she calls like this pretext of them creating this online diary like i'm doing this because blah 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 and she says that these quote can be seen as guidelines to the reader, as tools to pilot, pilot and sometimes control the addressee's interpretation of the diaristic narrative. Which is interesting because if you watched my vlogs, you know about our research, I think a lot about the author and audience relationship or the creator and consumer relationship. So this is directly calling in attention and showing an awareness of that relationship, which is really what I'm after that in producing multimodal specific multimodal composition specifically vlogs we're like heightened we have a heightened awareness of that relationship and of ourselves so that's interesting in terms of self-reflexivity she also goes on to say that like because of this public audience online diary writing can be like viewed as collaborative but like she doesn't go in depth this writing is really interesting like it's not a big book she covers a lot of topics in like little snippets so again thinking of them as like frameworks and then the final chapter, which deals with cyber bodies, is really interesting because she talks about how, like, in the early days of the internet, um, science fiction sort of, like, played this out and it said that, like, we will sort of transcend our bodies and it'll be this utopia where we're free of, like, bodily-based discrimination, so no more racism, no more sexism, etc. But this is not the case because we can never transcend our bodies. I also wonder with, like, this science fiction desire to transcend bodies i feel like we can read coloniality and colonialism into this we can read sexism into this just because a lot of like feminine ways of knowing are rooted in the body anyway another topic for another time but she says this isn't the case we do not transcend our bodies contrary to what early writers either hoped for or feared the perceived abstractness and immateriality of the internet may even have resulted in obsessively foregrounding the body and that's what I pick up on in my own research, that in vlogs, the body is like foregrounded even more than in like everyday life. But again, doesn't give a whole lot of examples here. And then she sort of ends off with diving like down a rabbit hole into like Freud and Lacan. And I'm like, I'm not trying to go there. Like if she's talking about mirrors, of course, she's talking about Lacan. But I feel like I get a lot of YouTube comments with people telling me to like read Freud and Lacan. And I'm like, I've done my time. I read those men. They're not for me. Uh, that's not what I'm working in. <laughs> I'm working in the composition studies, writing studies, the teaching of writing. I'm not trying to cite Freud, I'm not trying to cite Lacan. That's other other people's job for that. Um, but she talked about how they talk about this feeling of strangeness that overcome individuals when they realize that like the other is in themselves. And this is something that I used to think about like a lot more when I was like really down this rabbit hole of like defamiliarization and so I'm reminded like I, I need to bring that back in because that's what creates this like hyper awareness of our bodies is that it feels strange to us when I see this version of myself on my computer screen when I'm editing my vlogs or like when you hear a recording of your voice and you're like is that what I sound like? It's like this defamiliarizing nature and also like this train of thought of like seeing ourselves as like subject and object at the same time or seeing ourselves like through the audience's perspective like this idea of like the male gaze there's a lot of thoughts uh going on in my head so i think works like this are really good for like idea generation um and you could pick up any of her subcategories and use it as like a lens or framework so i don't know what i'm necessarily gonna do with this um it will take me in a different direction if I really like 
dive into it and use it as a critical framework. Um, so it might just make its way into the literature review. But really interesting, nonetheless. Happy Tuesday. I am in my car on the way to go to Kroger and Aldi and also I think Target just to get a scratchy post for Pirelli. <sighs> this morning I worked on my dissertation and it's hard. Writing is so hard, but I finally feel like I was making some good progress. Um, and I can't lie, I'm in a bad mood because I had to fight for my life with finish line. More on this when I'm in a place where I feel like I could talk about it. Okay, it is 1.30. That took me about an hour to go from Target to Aldi to Kroger. I just like did quick in and outs of all the places. Didn't really bebop. First up from Target, I got two of these large cat scratching posts. Probably really needs another one. She goes through them so fast and she only likes those cardboard ones. She doesn't like like the more sustainable like cloth ones. She's like, no, that's not for me. She won't even touch it. Then I went to Aldi and I got some stuff for just like more like snack lunch boxes that I've been making. Got some brie cheese, some pre-cubed Colby Jack cheese. Got these little mini non flatbreads, which I thought would be really good to put with hummus in our little snack boxes. These single served hummus cups, street corn dip that Megan and I love, but on second thought, I probably should have got more chips for it. Rip. Raspberries. And last but not least, strawberries. So from Target, I got these pimple patches, some more Nespresso pods, really like these caramel ones, and then a book. I just, well, a uh, pencil sharpener for my lip liner, and then this book. I loved Kylie Reed's Such a Fun Age, so this book has just been like on my list for a minute now. It doesn't have great reviews, but I don't know. I've been in a huge reading slump. So I treated myself to it. Target also does price matching on books. So you can always find it cheaper somewhere online than in the store and they match it, no question. And then for Kroger, where I got most of the stuff, got some pasta. Megan and I are actually gonna make the same pasta that I made with Zach. I, we used to make it quite a bit, but it like started hurting my stomach, but I just made it way less spicy with Zach and I was fine. So we're gonna do that. And we still have like a lot of the leftover ingredients, like heavy cream, Parmesan cheese. A poppy, love the dog pop one. We're gonna make black bean and butternut squash enchiladas, so some enchilada sauce, tomato paste for the pasta. And then the other meal we're making is like this veggie peanut noodle salad. So we've got a lot of veggies for that. Some red peppers, some cabbage, green onions, cilantro, carrot, um, butternut squash, red onion, avocado for the enchiladas, some eggs, milk, and coffee creamer. Frosted flakes, which we're obsessed with. These noodles go in the peanut noodle salad. These, this rice to go with the enchiladas. And then just like some bread. And I think that that's it. Probably in total, my target bill is 60 because these were 10, this was like 20. Um, Aldi was like 25 and then Kroger was like 45. So that's pretty good for the budget for the week. Okay, it is 2.07 now. I feel much better now that I ate. But PB&J and some hip peas, my favorite little easy lunch. But I desperately need to wash my hair. I ended up not even washing it on Sunday night like I thought I was going to before the video. I washed and styled it on Friday during the day and it just like lasted really well. I think because I sprayed texture spray and hairspray and it looked fine. I just put some dry shampoo and I was like, I'm not going to waste my time washing it again. But I really need to do that. Um... So I actually think I'm going to go to a coffee shop first and really lock in, do some grading and also get some lesson planning done because I've like gotten in this really bad habit of leaving lesson planning till the end of the day. Um, and then I just have to like rush through it and I'm like, oh, I just want to go to bed. And I know it's because I don't have to like start from scratch with lesson planning because I can use what I did last spring. So I'm like, oh, it won't take that long, but it still does take some time. Pirelli, stop. Just chewing on the handle of a coach purse. Um, <laughs> so yes, I'm going to go to Crumble. 
but I brought up wash my hair because crumble has like a really specific scent to it that I feel like just like sticks to my clothing and sticks to my hair and it's not bad it's just like really specific so i'm like okay i'll go there and then come back and like shower out the sun for my hair okay a lot later now i got so much grading done at crumble very proud of myself came home chilled a little bit took a shower and then jumped into lesson planning and things are like missing so i'm planning on teaching them how to use adobe premiere rush tomorrow and i had like a google folder with all like these shared assets of like someone talking it's like a sample from like this adobe training that i went to and things are missing from that google folder so i gotta poke around and find some like basic like template assets that they can work with and edit otherwise i'm gonna have to record something of myself talking but i really don't want them to edit me um so yeah that's unfortunately taking a bit longer than i want it to but you know how lesson planning goes. So I'm gonna get started on dinner now. I am going to make those butternut squash enchiladas. Megan is working. I'm getting a little bit of a late start on this, but it's okay, it'll be a late dinner. <sighs> it's what I didn't want to happen. 9.35, here I am, lesson planning. But I had to make dinner and I had to watch Love is Blind, so priorities. Yum. Good morning. Happy Thursday. So it is currently 10:51. I am nice and cozy sitting in my office. I just got a second writing shift done for the day. I told myself I had to wake up early today and I had to get some things done. I woke up at 6.45 and I wrote for like an hour like before I started vlogging and then I made some breakfast and chilled for like 30 minutes and then I jumped into another little writing stint. I wish I had a little bit more to show for it but I feel like this was like the hard thinking work and then like the next time or maybe the time after that that I sit down to write it's like gonna flow manifesting that working on this part of chapter two of my dissertation right now where I'm tracing some key elements of vlogs back to the foundation of blogs so this required me to do like a lot of research about like the beginnings of blogs which this is like wild because I feel like a lot of the stuff that I'm researching spawned at like around the time I was born so all this stuff was like pretty much within my lifetime um it's like the first blog was like right around the time when I was born in like the mid 90s and obviously like this gave way to like video blogs or vlogs but I have like a little blurb here about like the vlog's predecessor the blog what it was how it came to be how with platforms like open diary and live journal and blogger people stopped having to have like these specialized skills and like HTML coding knowledge and they could just write about their everyday lives. And I have a quote here where it says, blogger was so simple that many users began posting linkless entries about whatever came to mind, walking to work, last night's party, lunch. And I feel like that's what we see in vlogs that make them so interesting to me, like this focus on the mundane. Well, like that's one of the many things. And then I have a little section here about specifically how blogs were linked to audience and like audience comments. I have to elaborate on that a lot more. Um, and like the main things that I'm focusing on with vlogs are audience awareness and embodied awareness. So I'm tracing how these were beginning to play out in blogs specifically to just lay this foundation and to say, okay, look, but when they're carried over to vlogs, they are amplified because we are seeing physical bodies on screen. And like we, as the vlogger, are presenting our physical bodies on screen. And everything is also just like, not only amplified, but I don't wanna say more immediate because it's not because you have like more rounds of edits, I'd say with vlogs and with vlogs, but like <sighs> bigger audiences maybe on YouTube and also I don't know if this is true, but I feel like you have more comments than traditional blogs do, which I guess like goes hand in hand with bigger audiences. I still have to think about that. 
but I wrote this section here about the way that someone was categorizing in 2014 blogs in relation to identity. And she says, no matter what a blogger's intentions are for a blog, it will construct an identity, like point blank period. And then she says the identity could be aspirational, actual, individual, communal, deliberately deceptive, or even subsumed under a corporate gloss, but identity will be there. Slay. She also like draws on her own experience and she says, as a longtime blogger, I kind of, I cannot imagine chopping off that part of my identity. For me, it is vital. It is the core of my scholarship and self. And that just like hit and resonated with me. And I added a, a section here. I don't know if I'm going to keep it or not. I like try and weave in like little auto ethnographic bits that like lean on like my own experience being a blogger. And I say, I agree with her intense feelings here as someone who blogs just in video form. I too have visceral reactions when thinking about removing that practice from my life. My YouTube channel has become such an integral part of my everyday and academic life that the thought of removing it does indeed feel like chopping off part of my identity and part of myself. Like, I sometimes wonder like what's gonna happen after grad school with this vlog and like this YouTube channel and I like, I can't think about not doing it. It makes me so sad but also like I truly just cannot fathom it. It is like part of me it is a core part of my identity like she says here which is wild to fathom because i've only been doing it for a few years and then i'm going to work on citing some other scholars like the one i talked about with the mirror and the veil and dana boyd who i feel like it's like a popular like a public intellectual and talk about the way that they link blogs to like physical bodies and Boyd says something really interesting that when someone leaves like harsh comments on a blog, it's like leaving unwanted graffiti on someone's body. And like that's making some intense connections, which I love to see because that like as someone who like blogs, but like in video form, that is how it feels. It feels like these are not just like comments about what I've produced, they're comments about me. And like sometimes they literally are. If I I also like delete hate comments, that's why you probably don't see them. I don't get that video on YouTube, but I delete them immediately um, because this is my channel and I'm curating this space and I don't want that here. And if someone comments on like my physical body, which is rare, I think I've gotten like two hate comments on my physical body in the whole time I've been like making YouTube videos, um, but they are like literally commenting on my body. So you get more of those comments into you in like the blog space because like a lot of times people don't even put pictures of themselves with blogs, at least when it first started. So yeah, all these thoughts and then I want to eventually get to this claim where I'm saying like if all of this is true for blogging then like what happens with vlogging when someone's physical body is on the screen like all of this is amplified so we already have like this audience awareness and this embodied awareness with blogging so then when we transfer it to vlogging this is like heightened and this is amplified and then I also want to get into like defamiliarization and drawing on like stuff Sorosso a lot of stuff that I talked about in my perspectives how vlogging is like this really weird act and we see ourselves as like subject and object at the same time and that just like makes the process strange to us and as a result makes us hyper aware of it and hyper aware of ourselves which we can extend to being hyper aware of our audience to be more effective communicators but also communicators who write with more diverse audiences in mind and I'm starting to see like the whole thing come together with the first chapter and like when I first started thinking about the dissertation I could only think of it in bits and pieces I couldn't think about the project as a whole the whole arc of the project but I've been working with my advisor a bit more about like how I'm seeing the whole project come together and he's like you won't ever fully see it until you're done with the project and you're like oh that's that's what I meant to say and I it just took me 200 pages to get there so I know that that's inevitable but I'm feeling good because I'm like, okay, it's it's starting. I'm starting to see the whole arc, like I said. And I have been pretty nervous about getting into um, the chapter about, like, feminism specifically. But I'm starting to get, like, really excited about that lately. I know I'm, like, getting ahead of myself. I have to, like, work on this one first. But I've been, like, already have, like, a separate doc with, like, thoughts and stuff related to it. And part of me wonders how much I can lean on, like, autoethnograph autoethnography here um because so much of this project started with my diagnosis and coming to terms with the fact that I have PTSD and how that makes me hyper aware of my body and I've talked about this on this channel I've talked about it in a lot of places Instagram and stuff but I don't know 
there's got to be something there with like connecting it to like feminist practices like women are hyper aware of their bodies like in general but like adding ptsd onto that because of like sexual trauma which is often associated with women in marginalized communities people of color lgbtq community i i think that it could make like a really interesting framework for it but one thing at a time i'm really struggling to like stay present in the moment i feel like my brain is just like always wanting to jump to the next thing um just a little bit of a space cadet lately which is why i kind of feel like this vlog has been chaotic and all over the place like yesterday or two days ago when i got out of the shower i had my hair clipped up letting the conditioner soak and i turned off the water without even like rinsing it out and i like fully was getting out of the shower and then was like what am i doing because i was like so busy getting ahead of myself that like i anyway that's just a microcosm of what's going on up here okay my camera says i've been talking for nine minutes exactly so i gotta shut this off um and i gotta get ready to work at the writing center for three hours okay just kidding i'm not quite done talking yet as soon as i turn my camera off i was like i have another thought that i just want to like document for myself maybe this makes it in the vlog maybe it doesn't this whole project is like so incredibly meta and i say that every vlog but like there's like layers upon layers upon layers of it the main one being that like i am a vlogger talking about vlogs but like as i dive into these pieces what i'm dealing with now with like audience awareness i am like hyper aware uh, like hyper hyper aware of my audience because i'm writing about it and i'm vlogging um and like i'm specifically focusing in this section here like working with an author who talks about like the importance of comments on blogs and how that like helps reshape identity and as someone who like gives like the detailed ins and outs of my work I often get comments and I love getting comments like this that like give me ideas of things to read or new ways to think about things I get emails from you all and it's like super cool but like not only is this actively shaping like my identity and my relationship to my project but it's actively shaping the project itself um some of the best texts that I've read have been things that you all have suggested to me and so I know that we say that like writing is collaborative like that's a big thing like rhetoric and composition writing is collaborative but I'm like this is truly the definition of collaborative writing okay quick little fit check for the writing center wearing my trusted gray super soft sweater from H&M these black um why am I blanking flare leggings yoga pants whatever they're like a cottony material from old navy new balances just have a little headband in because my hair's pretty wild and greasy but let's go okay update from much later it is 10 30. megan and i did some exciting stuff we booked some tickets for spring break i'm crushing her family's spring break for the first half of it and then i'm doing my own thing for the second half and meeting up with my sisters but i'm so excited we're gonna do some fun stuff i still have to decide if i want to vlog or not but we had to buy the flights for that and then we just like got talking about i don't know really serious stuff like job market stuff and just like thinking about the future and it stressed me out <laughs> i mean i was the one who brought it up so it's my fault but i don't think i'm gonna be able to get in bed and just sleep i think i need to take a shower and try and like calm down a little bit so i want to take like a nice mindful shower try and be like really present um that's what i talked about in therapy tonight hi purr and then get in bed feeling fresh and clean but still a little anxious um i'm gonna go to bed i think i'm gonna end up the vlog here this feels a bit of like a random ending but it's gonna be just like an editing day tomorrow for the vlog and of course getting some writing done so if you guys made it to the end of vlog thank you so much for watching if you're not subscribed already now would be a great time to go ahead and do that leave a comment give it a thumbs up follow me on instagram I've been posting a lot on TikTok lately. Follow me on TikTok. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.